very grateful. Very grateful. Uh, reality is, is there is no reality but right now. We can look back, and I think it's good to look back. I ask myself sometimes, why do I like pictures so much? But pictures help me because time that has gone, mother, that's all I have. And what I find out is, especially as I get older, Mother Helen, my memory, not what it once was. Amen. Not what it once was. I'm, I'm often surprised as I look back at videos, and I'm glad that we have videos of the services all the way back to 2015, 2015. When I look back, I don't really realize that some of y'all been over here long as you have. Oh, yeah. And uh, some of the people that have been through. And so we went to a, an award ceremony on Friday night. Many good things were said uh, to help me, Mother Minnie. One thing was a, a lady mother said that life is a layer of decisions and said, make good ones. That wasn't lost on me because I know one bad decision can have uh, severe ramifications but the good side of that is one good decision you know I thank the Lord that in when I was 32 or 33 or whenever when the Lord uh, put on my mind to go back to school and to get get, get a college degree and get a law degree uh, I'm 65 now uh, would be no use of me making that decision now and I thank the Lord that at that time, God put it on my mind. Yeah. I thank him. I thank him. The Bible says every good and perfect gift come from, a God, from, come from God, Brother Alex. And I just don't feel right taking credit for no good thought that come to my mind. I have to tell, hey, glory. I have to tell God, thank you. Thank you for giving me a good. You know, we live in such a negative world. Yeah. You ever been around people don't have no, they don't have nothing good to say about anything. And for God to come in the midst of all that Amen. and to give you a good thought, yeah. I'll run up out of here. I said, Lord, I thank you. Yeah. I thank you. Ain't you glad that out of all that's going on that God haven't allowed it to overtake you? Yeah. Aren't you glad that you still got joy? Yeah. Aren't you glad that you still got a mind to tell God thank you out of everything that has happened? Hey, glory. I'm just grateful this morning. I'm grateful. Well, most of all, that my coming this morning, I don't believe, is going to be in vain. Right, I believe that somebody going to open up the Bible yes. and point to a scripture oh, yeah. and then to uh, explain and, and, and to elaborate on it. Yeah. I'll get a chance to meditate on the word of God. Yes. Yes, and God get a chance to speak to my heart. Oh, yeah. I thank the Lord for my beautiful wife. She's the most wonderful thing I ever known. Now, I don't nobody, and I don't expect nobody else to feel that way. I promise you, I don't. You ought to feel that way about yours. Yeah. But for me, right. I tell you, I, I don't miss nobody. I be at home. I'm telling you, that God is good. I be at home with my wife, and uh, all the laughing, all the talking, all the joy, all the fun that I want, I find it right there in my house. I'm trying to tell you. And so I'm grateful for that. I don't have to get out and ride the roads and looking for nothing. I got it all right there at home. And I thank God for that. I, I, it's peace. It's peace. And I tell you, uh, on Friday, we, we marked 42 years. 42 years. 42 years of what I got enough nerve to say is marital blitz. I got enough nerve to say that. Because I tell you what, in everything, it was a lesson and a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. And the old saints used to say, we come this far oh, no. by faith. Yeah. Love. Yeah. Love. Love kept us together. Oh, no. yeah. And I'm just a firm believer. I know people don't believe it these days. But you don't walk away from what you love. Oh, you know. I know people don't want to go along with that and everything. But I, you don't walk away from yeah. it. You'll walk away and turn around. Right. You'll make a way. To come back. You might be shamed. You know, every I tell people don't talk so much. You know, folk get mad at their mate and everything and talk about them and everything. Next time we see you with them, you shame. Yeah. Just hold some of that. 
All right, I've talked enough. Uh, say amen for Lady Deborah as she comes. I'm blessed. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, baby. I appreciate God for that. Thank you so much, Pastor. Man, you turn it down just a little bit, Brother Curtis. Um, I'm grateful to God to be here today. Look, I'm grateful to be standing on my own two feet. Because I, you know, and I usually don't do this, but I'm telling you over the weekend, I could hardly stand on my own two feet. And so this morning, I am absolutely grateful to God. Uh, for him uh, raising me up uh, so that I could be here this morning. I appreciate him, and uh, I thank God for uh, my husband of 42 years. Uh, uh, Pastor, you know, somebody asked me, does it seem like 42 years? I said, well, you know, it really doesn't. I almost want to say, like um, Jacob said for Rachel, just seem just like a, a few days. 42 years seems just like a few days. Absolutely. And so when you look back over it, two Two children later, here we are. <laughs> I thank God because he gets the credit. Uh, certainly, if it's nothing that uh, I did or nothing that Pastor did, uh, uh, that we are here this morning, but God gets the glory. And so I just appreciate it so much. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, please, to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Matthew, the 28th chapter. We're just going to keep on. I actually finish up in the Gospels this morning. And um, really don't know, uh, you know, of course, we go on over into Acts, and I'm just not quite sure how the Lord is going to lead uh, as we do that. Uh, but um, in Matthew, the 28th chapter, so we know that what we've covered thus far is uh, Jesus is alive, just like he said he would. Like Deborah, since we went some part into Acts uh, in Wednesday night Bible study, as the Lord lead, but I wouldn't be opposed if you skipped over that. Okay. Maybe the second part of Acts, if you okay. wanted to, okay. the part I didn't get to. Okay. Yeah, as the Lord lead. Okay. All right. And I, and you know, and I, that's exactly where my mind was thinking that I certainly don't want to be redundant in that because we have we've done that uh, just recently, and so that's. Uh, kind of what's in my mind. And so thank you for that, Pastor Bland. In Matthew, the 28th chapter, Jesus has gone from the Sea of Tiberias to Mount Tabar. So we know that um, uh, where he met his disciples on the shore there where they were fishing. And uh, Peter jumped out and uh, swam to meet him on the shore. And so now in uh, Matthew 28 and uh, 16, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Not, 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 not the 11, but some, th this would let you think that there were some other disciples around because we know by now they were sure that Jesus was who he said he was, that he had arisen just like he said he would. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power, all power. How many of you know it means something to have power? It means something to have power. But Jesus said, not just some power, but all power. And so this morning we serve a risen Savior, a risen Savior who has all power uh, that has been given to him. And when he says all power, he means all authority, authority, yeah, all authority, the right to use the power that you have. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And then he gives them a command. So he tells the disciples, uh, uh, Sister Keisha, he gives them a fact, he gives them a command, and then he gives them a promise. The fact is that, in fact, all power, all authority is given unto me. The command he gave them is, go ye therefore and teach, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and then uh, he says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And the promise to them was, lo, I am with you always until the end of the earth. Now I want you to go over with me to Luke. Let's go over to Luke, the 24th chapter. Luke, 
loop 24. Let's go all the way over to around about the 44th verse. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. And so we know as we were going through the gospels that Jesus was trying to talk to them and tell them all along his purpose and tell uh, them uh, the reason that he uh, came and what he had to endure while he was here and tried to give them a peek into what was going to happen. But we know that there was only up to a point where they could comprehend what he was saying. And so now he's saying, this is what I was trying to tell you all along. Um, he gently, gently rebukes them for uh, uh, their uh, initial unbelief. And then uh, he's going to com com he's going to repeat his command to evangelize the world. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms, what? Concerning who? Concerning me. In other words, concerning Jesus. And so Jesus, as he expounded to them, uh, he did the same thing as he did. You kind of remember the conversation with the disciples on the road uh, to uh, uh, Emmaus. And so he opened up the scriptures to them uh, from Moses down through. He just opened up the scriptures to them. And so some, let, let me just say this. Sometimes if you don't have, um, you need someone to open up the scriptures to you, to help you sometimes. You understand what I'm saying? Now, God will reveal through the Spirit. But sometimes there is, uh, uh, when, when uh, someone has uh, the scriptures that's been revealed to them, they can help you to see it uh, in a different way, and they can help you to see it uh, for the way it was intended, in the context that it was intended to uh, be placed in. And so he opened up the scriptures to them, letting them know through the scriptures, down through the scriptures, from Moses, through the Psalms, Pastor Bland, they talked about how that he would come and the, the things that he would suffer, that he had to suffer, that he had to suffer, the, uh, that he would, uh, he would uh, rise again, and that he would rise again on the third day. And then through the scriptures that, that the remission of sins would uh, be preached in his name to all nations. Now, that, that he, he, he revealed that to them. He opened that up to them. And then opened he, their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And thank God, you know, without an understanding, you have to have and understanding, Pastor Bland. And he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning where? At Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Then he tells them to wait. Wait. Pastor Man, what's your new saying? What's your new saying about waiting? About that? Oh, 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 I don't mind I don't mind having patience by it. I don't mind having patience by it. I just don't like to wait. <laughs> so which which is really just crazy because that's what patience is, isn't it? That's what patience is. And so, and so Jesus, is, Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait, wait for the promise of the Father. Waiting is something that Pastor Bland, well, we all, just, it's just something we don't like to do. Yeah, it is, it is absolutely, because uh, it goes against the grain of doing it and getting it right now, uh, whatever it is that you're having to wait on. But this, this is something that they would need, uh, someone that they would need in order for them to go out and fulfill the commission 
that uh, Christ had given them. And so he says, go and wait. And so in the 50th verse, he says, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye wait in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Have you ever noticed when uh, someone or even yourself, just think about yourself, and I, I do this all the time and I have to just really slow down. If something that I get or something that I have to do, I want to dive into it right then. I just want to dive into it. But I, I, and sometimes you just need to wait. Sometimes you just need to wait, especially if it's something you're trying to put together or something uh, you're trying to plan. You know, uh, I just want to get into it. And then when I get into it, I end up messing stuff up. I break stuff and, and the plans don't come together. That's because I haven't had the patience. I have a way that uh, now, OK, they doing this again. He pointing over there at you, Brenda. I don't know if you can see him or not. <laughs> It's, it's an excellent line of teaching, and, and I think the reason that the church keeps going around the same mountain like Israel, we teach about love, we teach about patience, we think about, we teach about kindness and all this, uh, attributes that certainly if you have in your life, it will enhance your life and the ones around you. But I think the reason that we keep going around the mountain is, is that we don't realize that we will never have those things. Mm. Those come from God. Mm. The Bible speaks about, in Galatians 5 and 22, the fruit of the Spirit. And so that comes from God. It doesn't come from us. But we are steady being preached to telling us we're supposed to have this. And nothing is as frustrating as going to work and, and they ain't got no money. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, 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 um, he says, until you be endued with power. In other words, I have given you a job to do. I've told you what to do. You go out and you do this, but I'm going to equip you to do it. So, Pastor, until you're equipped to do it, you need to go and just stay. This is what, what he said. Now, just wait. Just, yeah. And so, um, when you go off with just half of what you need, you're going to end up coming back. Or you end up fainting out. And so, what he's trying to tell them is, you know, you don't have to faint out because I'm going to give you what you need. And, if it, and we always say, well, if Jesus sent you, he will equip you. But you got to, you, got to, you know, receive what he's equipped you with. And so um, he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And so um, it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven, and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. So he orders them, uh, as, as I said, what, what we refer to as the Great Commission, he orders them to witness for him. He's received up into glory, and we know when he goes up into glory, he's now sitting at the right hand of the Father. This was 40 days after his resurrection. So if you just flip on over to Acts, the first chapter. So in essence, then, Acts is, is, as Pastor has already taught us, is a transitional book that actually kind of picks up where Luke leaves off. And so uh, in Acts, the first chapter, and this is, we'll, we'll finish our lesson up here uh, today, and uh, we'll come back next Sunday and, and probably do as Pastor has suggested. Let's pick up with the latter part. Uh, or the second half of the book of Acts. And so Acts uh, 1, let's go over to Acts 1. Lady Deborah, can I say this? You can. Okay. Um, something I never realized until I got over here. While this all is going on and Jesus is preparing them and he's sending them out and he's giving them instructions, 
he is giving them instructions on uh, the administration of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. The New Testament. In fact, you know, when he takes them to the upper room, he tells them that this is the blood uh, of this um, of, of the new covenant, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so, their instructions are for the New Testament, which was made with Israel. None of these instructions are directly involved with us. And where we as the church has messed up is, is that we, by not rightly dividing the word, we have taken all of this, Matthew 28, where he tells them to go to preach all nation, uh, even in Acts, the first part. We've been taught that all of that was to us, and we've tried to, 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 to do it to the best of our ability, sincerely and have not, we've not been able to do it. And it's not a failure in God, it was because uh, we took somebody else's uh, instructions. And so when I realized, and, and, and probably about 90 some percent of the church don't know that the New Testament was not given to us directly. We are under grace. We're not up under any kind of covenant, any kind of agreement. And finish what I'm saying with this, the odd thing, Lady Deborah, about the New Testament, and, and something about when God removes the veil, you know, sometimes people can't hear what you said because they already got in their mind what you're going to say. Absolutely. Or what they're going to say. Yeah, what they're going to say. But on the other hand, if I already have my opinion of you, mm -hmm. no matter what you said, I'm going to flip it and make it like, no, and you're like, I did not say that. You ever tried to explain something to somebody and they already had it in their mind? Well, with the New Testament, if I really read it like it says it, that will be when God will come and really he'll just take over. They won't have any need of any teacher. We need a teacher. But they, in 1 John 1, 2, 7, he said, but the anointing that you have received, you have no need that any man teach you, for the Spirit himself will teach you. But we, we need a teacher, we know, you know. So when this, and, and, you won't, and you won't sin, you won't do anything wrong, and that you know we ain't there now. And so this is the New Testament, which was going to be, uh, that was made with Israel. But when Israel failed, then that postponed the, the, the implementation of it. And I just never had been taught that. I mm -hmm. never looked at it that way. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked at all of what I was reading. I looked at it from the viewpoint of what I was being taught. Mm -hmm. And I would argue you down. And then if you tried to show me something else, my mind would close off. Because this is what they taught me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That was Thank longer you, than what I was. No, no, that's okay. Does anyone else want to, Mother, Mother Helen? We do baptism. You know, the churches do baptism. Mm -hmm. But like Pastor just said, it wasn't to us today for that. But now you, they'll argue you down that you got to be baptized. I've been baptized three times. <laughs> <laughs> baptized in the Baptist Church, baptized in the Methodist Church, baptized in the Church of God. <laughs> I don't know. Are you saved, Mother? Uh, yes, darling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But see, on Pillar Hill, there's a Baptist church across the railroad track, Methodist church behind the house. Everybody can was back in the day. So you go into Baptist in the morning time, you go to Methodist in the evening time. Then you come over here and you can say the church of God Christ, then you get baptized again. So, oh, wow. I, 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 <laughs> absolutely. Mother, mother uh, Minnie. You know, when I was the place, until I came over here, I really wasn't sure after all these years how or uh, if I was truly saved okay. until I got a true teaching. And that just opened up my mind, my heart, and everything that now I have an understanding. Absolutely, and absolutely. And, 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 and as we said earlier, with an understanding in all I get and get an understanding, you know, it means so much. Now, with that understanding comes uh, uh, assurance. We, we, blessed assurance. Yeah, you know what? A person with our understanding is easier to get along with. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's so true. That's so true. And y'all, there's nothing, and, and you're so, so correct. We'll get to that in just a little bit, the, even the points that you alluded to. But um, when you are 
there's nothing like uh, being uncertain. That's a horrible feeling. That's a horrible feeling. It's kind of like living in limbo. And it's a horrible feeling, but when someone can say, you know, you, they would ask you, the question is, the question would always be, if you die right now, if you die right now, do you know where you would end up? Yeah. And then you standing there and you scratching your head. And then you know and what you're thinking, Brother Alex, because you know what you just did last night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you scratching your head saying, Lord, please, don't no, just let me live long enough. Just let me live long enough to get it right, get it right. You know what I'm saying? But there's nothing like being assured that, you know, Lord, I know that because of what you did, my salvation is secure. My salvation is secure. It never depended on me anyway. Just think. If it had depended on you, you never would be saved. You never would be saved. And so that's, it's ludicrous for us to think that we had anything to do with our salvation. It's all because of Christ Jesus. What we're reading right now, what he did, what he was able to do, the authority that had been given to him from the foundation of the world. Oh, my God, from the very beginning, uh, when uh, the, the council got together, the predetermined pre council got together and made the decision that he would come, he would come, that he would die, that he would rise up again. That decision was made. We had nothing at all to do with that decision. I thank God for that. I thank God because I make some foolish decisions. I absolutely make some foolish decisions. pastor was talking about that earlier, you know, and it's not just one decision. I'd be okay if it were just one time, but I keep making foolish decisions. And I'm trying to get better, but it's, um, I still make foolish decisions. You just do. And so um, uh, it's over in the book of Acts then, uh, as, as we continue where Luke kind of left off, uh, it, uh, it says the former treatise, I'm in verse 1 of chapter 1, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, which we just read, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So we know that that's the 11, the intimate ones that he had close to his bosom, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Uh, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And so the apostles then asked the question. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So see, Jesus did not answer that question concerning the uh, precise time when God would restore the kingdom to Israel, but he does promise them something, as we're talking about now, more important, just seconds prior to uh, his ascension up in uh, to glory as he tells them to wait and be endued with power from on high. And so now, uh, as we are uh, uh, getting ready to talk about this, the power that would give them power to witness in Jerusalem, power that would give them uh, the power to witness in Judea and Samaria and, and to uh, the uttermost part of the earth. And so... Um, after uh, his ascension, let's, let's, let's go on and read. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. And Pastor Bland, that is something right now that even, even now, you know, we, all, we, all, we want to get over into something. And, and I'm talking about just people in general. 
We want to get off into something that's really not even our business. Some things, some things you just need to let alone. It's just not your business, especially when it comes to the Lord's business. <laughs> God has a plan. God has a plan. And what we, we, we get into trouble when we try to figure out, Sister Cordelia, happy belated birthday, when we try to figure out the plan that God has. Because, see, you, we think, what, what good is it going to help you to know anyway, Mother Brewer? We're going to help you one bit to know the plan. Because there's nothing you can do about it because God already has it in motion. He said it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. When he had said, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And, 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 and as you we transition, a, a lot of people are stuck right there. A lot of people are stuck right there. They're just stuck right there watching him go up into heaven. You, see, you know what I'm saying? But there has been, his ministry is at work right now. The ministry through the Holy Spirit, it is at work. He is at work right now uh, through the Holy Ghost. And so as, as, as they go back to the upper room, they go back to the upper room. Now they, they come back and they come back, they leave, they go, they, they, you know, they're happy. They're happy. They have a message. They've received a message. Uh, the, their, their teacher is gone, but they've received the message that they will receive the power to keep doing uh, what they were doing to go on uh, in Jesus's name. And that's going to be important in this book. That's important. Talk about the name of Jesus. How many of you know that there's power in the name of Jesus? There's absolutely power, absolute power in the name of Jesus. That's important in this book because what we need to realize, even they realize it, and we need to realize it today, Pastor Bland, is that we don't have the power in our name. And that's where so many of us get off. We get off, we get off thinking that uh, it, we got the power to do something. We got the power to do something. But uh, it, it becomes very evident when you look at this. When you look at this, it's very evident uh, that uh, as, as they were endued with power from on high, they realized that that power came from God. And so uh, as, as they return back to uh, the upper room, they go back to the upper room, to Jerusalem, where they're joined by, there's about 120 of them in the upper room. And in the upper room, Peter emerges as uh, the leader uh, when they get ready to select another apostle. Now, why do they have to select another apostle? There's 11 of them. Why do they have to select another one? Because because of Judas, because of Judas. It would have been 12. It would have been 12, but Judas is gone. Okay, so Judas is gone. And so now in verse 15, in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about, were about 120, which I just said, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas which was God to them that took Jesus. In other words, he led the people there to get Jesus, to take Jesus and ultimately be crucified. For he was numbered with us and obtained part of this ministry. 
Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the mist, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, Asadama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalm, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. So uh, Peter used that scripture to say it's time for us to fill his spot. Okay? And so uh, as he uh, was talking to them, there are two requirements that had to be fulfilled in order for them to get another apostle. Because we, we've talked about this. We've learned this time and time again. He had to be one who had accompanied uh, the disciples during the three years that Christ uh, was uh, ministering. And then he had to be able to bear responsible witness to the resurrection of the Lord. And so we always go back to Paul and say, we know that's why Paul didn't fit that bill. Paul, Paul says he was uh, as one born uh, out of due time. And so, because he didn't fit that bill. So then they prayed, they prayed for God's guidance. They prayed for God's guidance in filling this position. So let's look at this part. And, and Lady Deborah, mm -hmm. that, that, that was a fitting thing, 1 Corinthians 15, where he says, born out of due time, uh, as he being uh, apostle, the apostle of grace. Because basically, grace, grace is when uh, the rules are broken on your behalf. You don't deserve it. You really don't qualify. But be out of love and out of kindness is given to you. Absolutely. Because his time had passed. Yeah. Jesus had died and had resurrected and gone to heaven. No way it could happen. Yeah. But grace. Yeah, but grace. But grace. Thank God. Thank God. And verse 24 says, And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, show whether of these two, they had two, Justice and Matthias, no, Bersabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias, okay? So, um, it says, show us whether of these two thou hast showed them. Let, let, one other point, Lady Deborah, mm -hmm. you asked me why, why did they have to replace him? Mm -hmm. Why couldn't they just go on with 11? It, Jesus has said that you will, in the afterlife, you would sit on 12 thrones absolutely judging the 12 tribes of israel absolutely and so god can't lie so it had, it had to, be to be 12. 12 absolutely but you know what i was thinking about when i thought that, i said well he said that you but i guess he was talking about your place because he judas lost his place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so he was true when he said you would but your position as an apostle and so he lost his place and somebody else took it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for filling that, uh, filling in that gap. I appreciate that. Um, so he says, and they prayed and said, Thou Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, show whether of these two men, show whether of these two rather, thou had chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression failed, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. You do, you, if you notice as you're reading, do you really don't hear anything about Matthias, do you? Not, not really. He, you just really hear that he replaced Judas, and that's, that's about all. And so, um, but that was who God ordained that to be, because God allowed it here. God allowed that to be, and so... Um, in chapter 2, uh, you come to the day called Pentecost, which was an important day for the Jews that came 50 days after the Passover. And so during this time, many Jews had grown plants for food. Uh, then on Pentecost Day, they gave the best ones to God. They also remembered how God had given the law to them. They upheld the law in high esteem. It was, it was, you know, it was, it was something major for them. And so on this particular day, however, God gave some, someone who was much more uh, important. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were uh, with one accord in one place. And suddenly 
there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, as of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. So the thing about that is you see that they were all speaking in different tongues, but when Peter got up to speak, they all understood Peter, didn't he? Speak. <laughs> Peter didn't preach in tongues. He didn't preach in tongues. He addressed them in the er everyday language that they knew. And so that, that, as I was thinking about that and, 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 and reading through that, that, that just kind of, I'm thinking about everyday preaching, everyday ministering, a preacher that can minister to everybody a preacher that can minister to everybody uh, at a level where they can understand it. L Lady Deborah, the Bible says that the common people heard him gladly, Jesus. Now, if anybody knew big words, it would be Jesus. But the Bible said that the common people heard. Now, he spoke sometimes in things that had to be spiritually discerned. He gave parables. And the disciple asked him, he said, why do you speak to us in prayer? He said, because it's given unto you to know. Mm -hmm. Some things are spiritually discerned, mm -hmm. and, and you just can't know them without mm -hmm. the spirit. Mm -hmm. but you, so you got to be able to, and, and that's important, because in, a, in, a, in an assembly, you have some of everybody right. in an assembly. Right. You have, look, look of Jaden, how old are you? 16, how old are you, Terrell? 19, you got 16 year old. How old is your grandbaby? What, I, I never can remember your name. Zakaria, how old are you, Zakaria? 16, you got two 16 year olds. How old is the old brother Brimley? How old are you? <laughs> huh? 80, 82. So you got a 16 year old, you got an 82 year old. You need somebody that can relate to both of them and everyone in between. Everyone in between. You got men, you got women. And Lady Deborah, that's without compromising the message. Absolutely. You know, I, I hear people talking about, well, we got to speak to the young folks. And you're talking foolishness. To, it's going to take the same gospel for young folks that it takes for someone. Oh, it don't change. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, and, and especially here, here, you know, because we don't pound, we're not doing hellfire and brimstone. We're not pounding that into you. We're talking about some life experiences. 16 year old is going to need to know it. Now, 82 years is going to need to, 82 year old is going to need to know as well. Because you're going to meet some things in life, Jaden, Terrell, Zakaria. You're going to meet some things in life that you're going to need to have uh, some understanding about how to navigate through it. You're just going to have to understand that. And so, uh, you know, is, when Peter rose up to speak, uh, he spoke uh, a message. He, st 
Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and I'm ending here, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And so we know that he goes on to uh, uh, let them know that that prophecy has actually been fulfilled. He explains what happened. The spirit has come. And he explains that it's the same, that he is the same spirit that Joel wrote about. He's here right now. What Joel wrote about, he's here right now. The wait is over. Yes. The wait is over. And so this was uh, an incredible to the Jews because, see, they thought that God's spirit was just given only to special people. And that's the way sometimes we think that right now. You know, we think the, the holier you look, the more spirit you get. And yeah, so y'all know I'm really saved. That's <laughs> but, uh, and he explained how it happened. The only reason that the spirit is here right now is because Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He explained that Jesus of Nazareth had indeed been raised from the dead and the resurrection, because he is raised, that proves that he is the Messiah. Proves that he is the Messiah. And so um, we're going to stop here and we'll pick up with uh, Acts. Later, I'll make one last point. You sure point. can. Uh -huh. S something that, you know, escaped me before like I said I, I, get, I was taught that over here and that is the difference between the spiritual experience in Acts 2 and the spiritual experience which I received I came from the Pentecost well when I say when I was saved it was in the Pentecostal church and so they taught from a spiritual experience from Acts 2 uh, which actually has nothing to do with the body of Christ that the spirit came on them they received power and they spoke with other tongues actually what they did they spoke in the languages of the different nations that were there mm -hmm. so that they could understand them mm -hmm. but that never was said it was just that you were supposed to speak in tongues and that experience is not even for it was never intended for the body of christ my spiritual experience was is that i believed and when I believed, I believed unto righteousness. And also, according to the scriptures, by one spirit are we all baptized into the body of Christ. I had a spiritual, I was baptized into the body of Christ. I was not, as in Acts 2, uh, somewhere where tongues of fire fell upon my head and I began to be able to speak languages that I had not learned. It didn't happen. And so I'm, I'm just grateful, and, and what it does, Lady Deborah, and I cut this off, mm -hmm. what it does, it makes me keenly aware of, do not read into what God is saying by what you think. Try to set aside, I, I try to set aside what I've been taught and what I think, and take him at his word, because that's the only way, Deacon, I'm gonna have real faith. Because faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. And you can just be as sincerely, I don't know if y'all have ever seen somebody catch the ball and they confused and they run the wrong way and they running hard. I mean, and you're running hard and you're running, but you're running the wrong way. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Pastor Bland. I believe we're going to stop right here and we'll pick back up next Sunday. Give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody. Yeah.